is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. To get in the trunk, season five, Glass Cannon Network. My name's Joe O'Brien. Troy Valley, Francis Bremer, Skid Mars, Cindy Emanuel, hanging out today, playing a little Delta John. This <laughs> is amazing. I'm having a, a fantastic time playing this. So fantastic, in fact, that we might be, there was a, a, a rumor that we might be adding an extra recording session in the coming days. We'll see if it comes to fruition. Uh, but I, I love getting in as much Delta Green as possible. And if we're going to do another one, that's that's amazing. So right before this session began, I got a bloop little update on my phone from, from my doctor, my uh, primary care physician. And it was oh. like, just a reminder, you have an appointment uh, at the exact time that this other episode might be happening of, uh, of Delta Green. Oh. And so I pressed two to cancel my doctor's appointment. Nice. Oh, wow. Wow. That is my commitment to you guys and yes. to get in the trunk. Also, I just hate going to the doctor. Uh, <laughs> Mr. O'Brien, your chlamydia medication is available. <laughs> <laughs> it came up on speaker. It's so funny how private these things are for good reason, for good reason. Yeah. But it cracks me up because this automated voice will be like, are you Joe O'Brien? If not, hang up or <laughs> authorities will come to your house. If you are Joe O'Brien, press one, you press one. It's like, there is a message for you from the doctor. If you'd like to hear it, enter your social security number. You know, oh, wow. Put all this shit in and then it's just like, the doctor says you're fine. <laughs> it's like okay all right uh, there's a, there's thank a god new... my horrible secret has been protected <laughs> fine. Yes. there's a new sketch in the uh new season of i think you should leave which is a great sketch comedy show oh on netflix yeah, i'm yeah. such a fan i know skid yeah and francis Never like seen it, too. it the one minute so i good. almost saw it i walked into the room with the guys oh, yeah. in <laughs> chicago i chicago. said what are you watching and they said i think you should leave and i left <laughs> you <laughs> sheep. I saw that happen. Uh, uh, but there's a there's a new sketch in it where like this guy gets a heart uh, stint thing and the doctor gets notified when his heart oh. rate goes up. Oh. And <laughs> the do That's the really doctor, funny. The doctor, the it gets even deeper because of course it does. But the doctor really wants to go to this club this that club, this yeah. guy gets yeah. into. So every time his heart rate goes up, he's texting him and he's like. Are you at Club Haunted you at House? Club? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, no, uh, I'm jacking off. I'm and he's like, I off. know you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, the doctor has such like, they do. They have like such personal information for you. And imagine your doctor called you like, enter your social security number. And the doctor's like, hey, Joe, um, I, I saw that you were like so busy the other day. You didn't call me. That's weird. Um, were you out? <laughs> anyway, call, call me back. Uh, it's Tim Heidecker, it. too. Isn't it oh, Tim yeah, it's Tim Heidecker. It is. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's Tim Heidecker. Yeah. It's, but he well, where totally does this different. air? Where do you watch this show? Netflix. Netflix. So easy. Oh, really? It's right there? And yeah. Joe, each On episode, the each episode is 10 minutes. To, yeah. Like, watch it in between, like, a kid taking a bath. Like, you have, it's so short. It's that hilarious. sounds up my alley because it's as I get really into funny. these one hour dramas and I love watching them, I can not, except if I'm flying to a glass cannon live show, watch more than 10 or 15 minutes at a time. And it's a combination of both. Like there's so much going on with the kids all the time and work all the time, but it's also like, I, I've just gotten into such a, a rhythm with that, that like, I'll watch something for 15 minutes. And even if I have more time, I'm like, uh, I'm going to do something else now. Like, I'm just like, so in that zone, I basically need to be a captive audience on an airplane to watch an entire hour of TV at once. It's some of the best comedy out there. Actually, I did, we just started watching The Detroiters, which is the show- oh. That Tim Robinson did on Comedy Central before the show between SNL and and this. Oh, right. Francis, and, uh, it, it looks like you haven't seen it. You should see it, Francis. I've it heard of this, yeah, but I haven't. Two seen guys it. at an ad agency. 
they are the worst at coming up with ads. <laughs> it is so funny. Oh God, I got to see that. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's him. It's Tim Robinson and Sam Richardson, who is in a lot of, I think you should leave. And, yeah. Right. He was in uh, that Malcolm too. Jamal Warner is a guest on the first episode. And, oh, no way. Theo? That's uh, random. Theo? Theo? Yep. Yeah. It's, That's it random. is. It's really fun. There's a lot of like, I think you should leave DNA in it. It's nice. Fun. That's awesome. Uh, let's, let's get to work here because <laughs> I was, oh. I was just before we, we started the call, uh, I was not before we started the call, but before we started the show, I was complaining, uh, about running this game, uh, cause <laughs> it's, it's brutal. It's, it, it is going to kill me and I shouldn't complain really because honestly, my part in this is not that bad. It's really, it's really nowhere near as hard as you guys have. <laughs> and I just don't think you quite understand yet. So before we jump in today, how about I launch into a quick explanation of the battle uphill that you have ahead of you right now? This is what you need to be thinking. You can't be thinking, I'm going to show up here to this recording and have fun or <laughs> enjoy myself. Right. You are coming to work when you come here. This is a an approximately 370 page operation for delta green mystery for delta green Jeez. Jeez. it is from page one just uh peppered with clues of everything of the whole big story that is happening and you guys have gotten your hands on a great deal of this now as we enter the 23rd episode so far of this story. You are part of an investigation that you have so much information in front of you now that you're not you're not remembering and you're not connecting. And it's there if you just dig into those notes, and we did a little, a little of that last week, and I was so juiced, it was amazing when you busted out your old notes and realized <laughs> you heard names before, like Dorothy Yale. It was a patient that you saw in the night floors. You heard names before, um, like... I don't want to give anything away, so I'm just going to just stick with Dorothy L for the moment. But you uh, like Michael Whitwer, you know, and yeah. you go into your notes and you see, oh, you see, you saw Dr. Richard Dallin. Dr. Yeah. Dallin oh. is on the chart for Dr. Lyra Westover, you know, all these little things that are are coming together. And I just I urge you to dig into all of this, including all of your evidence from last season. It's all there. You know, it's all in your journals. Uh, it's it's all available for you to look at at any time because you will find answers there that are going to lead you in really interesting directions. And I really hope that you <laughs> you start to put this thing together because it is incredible. It, it truly is how well it is weaved. Uh, and sometimes I don't live up to the book quite so much, but I think that you guys, if you put your heads together, can do a good job of it. Uh, so keep looking at that evidence and just know this is not one of those operations where, and I've seen operations like this where you don't really need to do anything. Things just happen to you. You know, things just happen to you. This this is not that. This really is uh, you guys are driving the boat. So keep that in mind and, and don't wait for me to tell you what to do. Make sure that you at any time uh, push these ideas that you may have and dig deeper whenever you think the time is right. Um, let's get back to it. I mentioned Dorothy Yale. This is a patient at the Dorchester house, a psychiatric facility that all of our agents are currently in as they investigate uh, some escaped patients uh, as part of a Delta Green operation called India Moon that was given to them by Agent Exeter. They uh, they go to this hospital. They meet the head of it, Dr. Richard Dallin, who, after all their research, seems to be squeaky clean. <laughs> Maybe a little too clean, thinks Roger <laughs> Cumstone, about everyone in the world. <laughs> and... Uh, 
he meets with you and explains to you, gives you a, a brief overview and run of the, the hospital, of how it works, of how it operates. The third floor is where the most dangerous, violent patients are held, those that need the most treatment and are often uh, need to be sedated for sleep or need to be uh, strapped in at night to, in order to not hurt themselves or others. You know that the second floor is where patients go when they are getting better. We learned that Dr. Lyra Westover, for a long period of time, was on the second floor before she was transferred back to the third floor about two weeks ago after an incident where she saw somebody. She hallucinated and described, began talking to someone named Roger, which I guess freaked out what, uh, whoever was on duty, and she apparently had some sort of violent episode when she was brought out of this hallucination. Uh, you also know that the first floor is uh, where the most the patients that are closest to leaving the hospital is. You know that there's a cafeteria down there. You know there's a game room on the second floor. You know that there's a men's wing and a women's wing. So just getting you all back into this hospital where you are and a picture of what you began to go through. You went to the security desk and talked to Michael Devon. You saw that there's no real evidence on the surveillance video footage of anyone leaving the hospital or even the missing patients leaving their room. However, there was a glitch as well that didn't account for about eight minutes at around the time when the uh, patients could have escaped. So far, uh, you've met Nurse Samagina, who was directed by Dr. Down to give you a tour of the hospital and take you wherever you needed to go. No one you've talked to so far has given you any indication of any evidence of how these people could have escaped the hospital. And then, as you're in Michael Whitworth's room looking at the bloody scrawl on the wall that said, In blood, Abigail Wright has gone to sea, cross the waves, to rescue me. This is on your evidence board. In a ship, both tall and fine, she rounds the corner, marking time. Bobby takes out a little evidence kit and <laughs> scrapes some of this dried blood off into a vial to get a sample. And at that time, you hear a voice from down the hall say, I know where they are. And someone that Nurse Samagina refers to as Ed urges you to come and speak with him. He is sitting in the third floor men's wing common area near the exit to the men's wing in a plush padded chair in the corner waiting for you when you come around into that room. And he says, step into my office. I'll get you all caught up. Grab a chair, grab a chair, sit down, make yourselves comfortable. And he's kind of like, tall, skinny, hair kind of all messed up, still relatively short, but kind of all mussy, uh, wearing a patient gown and uh, urges you to pull up some chairs that are nearby. What do you do? Uh, before we jump into that. Yes, you, please. Well, you mentioned the, the, the word Exeter. W what was the context of that? Agent Exeter. That was the uh, your handler. That's his agent name. Didn't we hear Exeter in like one of those radio broadcasts or something? Like, didn't we hear that? Yes, phrase? we did. Yes, we did. Oh, oh no. Hold Somebody on. doing their investigative <laughs> homework oh my God, over there. Wait a <laughs> yes, I have it written down, but it's not very helpful. But it says uh, in my note, I was just looking at that skid, scrolling through my notes. I talked about giving Phil the airline ticket. Above it, all I wrote, Exeter. And then above that, a world without doors book found in apartment. So somewhere between that, Ooh. we heard Exeter. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, wait. I, it's what, my what notes. Radio. What, my what notes make about? me feel like I'm insane. The Sorry. ham, or no, it wasn't a ham Exeter. radio. Yeah, uh, uh, field. The field radio. radio. Field radio. Oh. In Isn't that where we heard it? Abigail's nope. apartment. The phone. No, it was the. It was like Exeter. Oh. Twenty four. There you go. Oh yep. wait. Oh my God. But wait, wasn't. Roger the only one listening to the phone or there was like somebody who had the, the phone it was the only person that heard the name Exeter it was through a phone and it was Neil Neil oh. Oh. Neil heard it through the bedside phone of Michelle Van Fitz's bedroom telephone oh, when he right. was dealing with the body and everything or when he was trying to leave the room 
as he knew Roger was going to murder Michelle Van Fitz, <laughs> and he didn't want to be part of it, he walked away, and he said, is there a phone in here? And I said, yeah. And he said, I want to call my office. He picked up the phone, no dial tone, and just sort of like, like two-way radio uh, static. And he heard the word Exeter. Exeter. Twice. Holy and then it and then it went away. I mean, okay. what, yeah. What do you want to do with that? Like, are you just gonna like <laughs> that? You're keeping that in mind as a player right now, or yeah, does Neil I mean, remember this earlier? Like, you know, how is this gonna? I think Neil in? probably. Well, I don't know. Like, maybe this is only occurring. To, like, so much stuff happened. It's been that, 20 years. And it's yeah. been a long time. So, like, maybe maybe it's only, like, it, it is only occurring to him now the way it's occurring to us. So, but, yeah, I mean, maybe what, something what would just he about, even say? Like, what would he... Totally. Like, you don't have to say anything. But what I would want to know is what is Neil thinking when he... If he walks out into this common room, he sees this guy, and for whatever reason... And you know this, right? We all know this. The human brain is a very weird organ. And at times, something will occur to you for no apparent reason that it got into your brain, but it, it happens. And maybe in that moment, seeing this guy, something just whoop, and you remember hearing the name Exeter through a telephone, and you know that that's how your handler identified himself as Agent Exeter. That was his code name, his DG code name. I think... I think he probably has that written down from his notes from the time, like in his little. He, in his he did. Yeah. You literally said you wrote it down. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I think in the right now, like we're about to talk to Ed, but I think like he's just like itching to like find an excuse to pull out his notebook and, and, and double check. But, but yeah, it's just, it seems. He takes, uh, he's definitely noting the apparent significance of this. Uh, awesome. For anybody that's interested, I have uh, a note on this, actually. So any um, anybody that's watching or listening, if you're listening after the fact, if you want to pause and check this out, Season 4, Episode 9, Beyond the Pale, one hour, three minutes, and 50 seconds-ish in is this scene. Whoa. So there you go. Nice job, Skid, Delta Green Bottle Cap, which is really just <laughs> another way of saying good job bottle and has cap. no impact. On and the Sydney. Game I'm going to share this with Sydney. Hey! Oh, it's, honor, it's like a no prize. I'm, I'm, we're splitting it. <laughs> I I'm sharing half of it. Split it in two. It's useless now. And you yeah. get half. And I get half. <laughs> Solomon's child. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, uh, yeah, one floor over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> it's a cigarette martini. If you break it in half, you don't have two nickels. You got shit. <laughs> when classic. classic. When uh, he says, pull up a chair. Do you pull up a chair? Yes. Yes. 100%. Start dragging chairs over. <laughs> really loud chairs. <laughs> and sit down. He says, well, it is, and then he looks up and he sees standing behind you, Nurse Samagina. And he says, excuse me, I'm sorry, this is, this is confidential. This is a confidential meeting. I'm going to speak with the officers alone. Thank you very much. And she says, okay, Ed. And just sort of like slowly steps back and walks down a small hall, the hallway you just came out of where the patient rooms are. You don't see her for a moment. And he says, well, I'm here to try to save you some time, but of course we have to go through the proper formalities. I think I, <laughs> you know, need no introduction. However, I would like to know who all of you are. So uh, could you please provide me, and he starts reaching behind him, some identification, please. And he pulls out of a pocket in his gown, a small notebook and a little green crown. 
Crown? Crown, like... Crayon. Oh, oh. Crayon. oh God, you <laughs> motherfucker. You wow. fucking dummy. <laughs> that that silly came out. That's a Philly translation right so there. So unbelievably a subtitle here. hard, Joe. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, wow. For God's sake. Like... Those are two different things that have different significance in this game. Especially in this I game. I forgot that there's one in this crown. adventure. Sorry, right. I can you. A teeny tiny little crown. And he pulls out a little green crown no, and puts no. it on his head. This is like one of those little linguistic quirks that could cause a war. <laughs> I pull out my gun. Drop that crown! Kill him! <laughs> uh, he pulls out this notepad and he says, can I see your identification, please? I pull out my William Costigan, my badge. I show okay. Him. Uh, everybody else? Yep. Yeah, I, I, yeah, Penelope Isotope pulls out her thing. And did, Detective did Ed, Michael Vivens. Did Ed say his <laughs> last name. name? Or did someone say Ed's last no, name? No, he he just said I <laughs> we know that I need no introduction. But for those of you that are investigating, I'd like to see your identification, please. So he looks down and he looks at your identification, uh, Neil, and he just starts writing and he goes <laughs> I wait a minute. I know that name. I know that name. William Costigan. How do I know that name? Have we met before? It's a very common name. Irish name. I'm an Irish man. Hmm. Maybe. And he hands it back. He takes one from Vicky. Jotting it down. Uh, what is it? Penelope or... Uh Penelope Isotope. Penelope Isotope. Penelope Isotope. 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 We're taking this so seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Costing. We all all did this. We (laughs) all did something silly. We've all dug this grave. So he's writing this down in this book, and he says, Penelope Isotope, how long have you been with the Massachusetts State Police Department? Uh... I've been with Boston PD since, um, oh, geez, I don't know. Probably, I'm trying out my Boston accent. (laughs) Probably, uh, (laughs) I tried so hard. Probably, um, hot, hot, you tried hot, 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 hot. Pack the cat in the bassin yard. Pack, Uh, pack, Dunkin' Donuts, North Shore. Um, probably since, uh, 2000, uh, 2012 not not that long and, and pardon me ed what was your last name just so i can take it down from my notes and i pull out a notebook wist ed wist. wist could you spell that ed w i s t are we all gonna keep uh doing this charade here like you don't know who i am like i don't know that you're lying about who you are what are you talking about, Boston PD? You know that's completely different than a Massachusetts state police officer, right? No, I was with Boston PD. I got a promotion, and I'm with state troopers now. I had to switch. Uh, <laughs> I had to switch departments due to an internal. Uh, sure, you did. I does, wink back. I wink back at him. Does Nurse Samagina know? that you're not a state police officer. <laughs> oh, right, Ed. Bob, Bobby chimes in here. Uh, listen, Ed, if you're doing an investigation, we're happy to help out later. But right now, we're, we're taking care of ours. You, you got some information from us or what? Or what do you need? What do you got? Hey, hey there, Johnny Strongarm. Why don't we slow down a second, okay? You're skipping the formalities, officer. Right. Things are done in an order around here. This hospital is not some land of chaos. We do things a certain way. Your identification, please. Bobby tosses his uh, ID over to Ed. Michael Bivens. That's right. And how long have you been with the Massachusetts State Police? Officer Bivens. Detective Lo- Bivens. Long enough to know when somebody's stalling. So, what do you got, Ed? And, and he'll hand it back to you. And as he takes, Roger, do you give him your ID? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm. I'm not sitting though. I'm leaning against the wall, and I can't remember my name. Was it Mitsubishi <laughs> Aloha? Royale. No. Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Royale. Royale. Special Detective Mitsubishi Royale. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, he'll just kind of fling it at him. 
<laughs> oh, what's the matter with you, tough guy? You don't want to sit down? You, you don't want to sit down for our little meeting here? I sat all day. And he's writing in this, this little book. And he hands it back to you. Everybody give me a luck roll. Just straight Jeez. D-hundred? Straight D-hundred. You're looking for... Fifth, well, I won't tell you what you're for looking a, for. Are you looking for a 90? Because that's what I got. Are you looking for a 98? Because I think that matched my role play and my accent. <laughs> 35. 35 over here. 35 over here. Over here. <laughs> Gotta work 85. on my Boston accent. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> and Neil with an 85? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh... All right, this is interesting. So, uh, Bobby, you uh, strong arm him. He hands back the ID. And as he's writing down Mitsubishi Royale's name, you presume is what he's writing. You don't see what he's writing. In this little book, you remember something from the news, something that you heard in the news about the name Ed Wist. In fact, this was sort of like a big deal. And you might even presume the other agents have heard this name as well. And it's surprising that they haven't, and none of you have because of your die roll, because you somehow uh, just missed it uh, in, in terms of, of news. Because at this point, it is, oh, maybe five years old or so. But Ed Wist was in the news in a big way five years ago when he murdered both of his parents and his sister with a shotgun on his 16th birthday. Oh. And oh. the reason that it also stays in the news and is kind of famous is because his family was extremely wealthy. They were like super rich people. And this was like hot news everywhere. You remember because of your kind of you know, uh, CIA background and your focus on law enforcement and that kind of stuff, that he was convicted of this crime and was convicted not guilty by reason of insanity and was sent, now you presume, here. Hmm. Now he looks like he's about 21. So he's a young guy, uh, but you know that this guy is, you know, I don't know if the word serial murderer is the right, you know, but a mass murderer. Mass right? murderer. Like a mass murderer. Or spree, spree murderer. Spree murderer. So, wait, he exactly. killed both his parents and... And his sister. And his sister. So three people total. Three people total hmm. with a shotgun five years ago. I feel like this is a real historical figure. <laughs> <laughs> or you think of Ed Geist? Ed Geist? Is that a... I think that's a real guy. Ed Geist or Ed was? Yeah. Ed Geist. Uh, also, gun, gun killings just hit so close to home, and like it's 2015 in this yeah. world, and I'm just oh. like, that's a believable thing. This yeah, totally. man did that. Yeah. Um, also, like it's, I mean, where do we? Does he know where this? Do you remember where this took place? Oh. Uh, yeah, do, yes, it. <sighs> sorry, it took place uh, in New Hampshire. Oh. New Hampshire. Okay. Um, I was thinking of like Lizzie Borden, but that was, I think that was in Lowell. But that was in so, Massachusetts. Was it Lowell or Danvers? Uh, it might have been Lowell. I think it was in Lowell. I think it was in Lowell. I'm so, not sure. So Ed is, is still scribbling in his uh, little notebook right there? Yeah. So he's still scribbling in his notebook okay. and then he hands the ID back to uh, uh, Mitsubishi Royale. And Bobby, Bobby starts to recall. He's like, Ed Wist. Ed Wist. Why does that? I remember an Ed Wist from New Hampshire. You say that? Yeah. Yeah. He says, uh, is, that, is that you? What is this? Is this news? Yes, of course you remember an Ed Wist from New Hampshire. I'm very, very well known. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like we were saying, back to business here. Why don't you get me caught up, uh, up uh, on the case uh, thus far? How far have you made it in your investigation into the missing patients? All right, listen, we're not here to share information with you. You have information for us. We'll listen to it. What about the quid pro quo, Michael? 
What you're about not, the quid pro quo, Detective You're not Hannibal Lecter guy, all you right? You give me information, and maybe I can help you out. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds what? to me like I know more than you know. What do you know, Ed? Like I said, get me caught up on the state of the investigation, and it might help me to tell you what you need to know. Is anybody else going to say it? I'll say it. State of the investigation is you're making me lose my patience. We're here to look for evidence, look for clues. You understand that two patients are missing? Did you know them? Let's start there. Yes, I did know them. Excellent question, detective. Detective. <laughs> weak and answer. At you. Weak answer, Ed. Did you know them well? Did you interact with them? Did you know them? Of course I did. On a personal level? Were you friends? We lived in the same ward. Well, with Michael. Not so much, Dr. Westover. I would see her less often. And how would you describe Michael as a person? I just think it's so funny that the one who is not a detective is the only one asking questions in here. Pardon who? me? I just... Don't you think it's ironic that the one... That is not a detective in here is the only one asking. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I'm looking at all three of you and you're staring at her as if she's one of your colleagues. And you know she isn't. Look me in my eye. And he gets like really serious and looks at Neil. Look me in my eye and tell me that she is an officer in the Massachusetts State Police. And Neil takes off his glasses and he leans forward and he looks at him. And he says, why don't you believe that we are who we say we are, Ed? Oh, well, William Costigan Jr. I, I wasn't at all even suggesting that you are not a detective in the Massachusetts State Police, but well, perhaps we shall look into this, shan't we? And he like writes in his something in his book. He says, well, it's very obvious, Michael. As soon as I asked her how long she had been a Massachusetts State Police officer, she told me that she was Boston PD. That that doesn't make any sense, Michael. And I think you can agree. Can you agree that that doesn't make any sense? Look, whatever you heard, whatever you think you heard, is not why we're here today. Oh, whatever I think I heard? As if I'm hearing things and you're not? You're the one in the insane asylum guy. What? And he just like gets up and comes after you. Roll for initiative. <laughs> oh. I was trying way too hard that Massachusetts oh. tough guy thing, and it just it, it went bad. It went bad. <laughs> doesn't work in the asylum, I guess. They're a little sensitive. Doesn't work oh, in the geez. asylum, I guess. Uh, there is no rolling for initiative. Oh, okay. uh, you simply yeah. have your deck score. So please, uh, score. Okay. real quick down the line, give me your dex. Uh, dex time five, or, or is it just dex? Uh, it is dex. Just your dex. Sorry, just, just your dex. Okay, eleven. All right, and then Raja, eleven as well. That's right, Vicky, also eleven. Oh, also shit. eleven. Uh -oh. Awesome. We're and then beat the crap out Neil, of this guy. <laughs> uh, twelve. Twelve. Neil, sprightly Neil. Um, well, this wiry, pardon me, excuse me, this wiry uh, twenty-one-year-old launches out of his chair at Bobby and is going to roll. A, uh, an unarmed uh, uh, attack on you. Oh. So, uh, Bobby, you uh, you can dodge. Uh, you can fight back. I believe. Okay. So, w what are you thinking? I'm I'm dodging. I'm dodging. Dodging. I'm, okay. I'm dodging. Second roll. 
Yeah, so here... God. Oh, it's an 86. <laughs> oh! Oh! That's amazing, because I rolled a 7. <laughs> so he launches at you, and oh. it just comes as a surprise to you, Bobby, and he just... And he jacks you up, and you go to the ground. Oh, so, like the man. two of you, just bam, oh. boom, go to the ground, <laughs> and oh, uh, Neil, man. you get to act. Uh, <laughs> somebody get him off me! I <laughs> somebody get him off me! <laughs> Neil is going to quickly like go through his medical bag, and he's going to prepare a powerful dose of sedative. Whoa! Oh in yes! A, oh my God! Yes, in a Neil. syringe, he's gonna get that Bring ready it. to go. Oh Holy my shit! God. <laughs> he's not messed around. The boys are back in town, guys. We're doing right. it. We're, I said Boston PD. <laughs> Skid is gonna stab a guy. <laughs> tried to gaslight this guy in an insane asylum. Uh, yeah, yeah, you tried to gaslight a guy in an insane asylum. Amazing tactic, I gotta say. They don't Francis. like it. Thank you. They don't like it. Thank you. Apparently, they're not into that. They don't that. like it. Into uh, the, uh, yeah. And uh, okay, then that means it is uh, Bobby, Roger, uh, Vicky. You know, you guys can kind of decide who wants to do something. Uh, Roger will take the the action here. Roger is just going to slip in behind the guy and try and get him in a chokehold. Uh, okay, yeah, great. So All go right. ahead and give me your roll. I'm not going to dodge because I don't see you coming. Uh, oh, eighty five over sixty. Oh, 85 over 60. So somehow he's just, he's super slippery. So you come in, you try to go around his neck, and he just slips out of it. He's this covered in Vaseline. If this doesn't get resolved Can very quickly, I... there's gonna, there could be some damage here to Bobby. Go oh, ahead, God, uh, somebody get Vicky. Off me. Can I Bobby. seen Roger? Or, or Bobby, or Bobby. Well, this would be separate, but can, seeing Roger take an action and like move toward him, thinking that he would be able to subdue him, Vicky wants to try to see if he dropped his notebook when he dove for Ooh. him and try to snatch it up and hide it in her pocket in the in the fray of everything. Ooh, nice. uh, okay, awesome. Uh, so go ahead and yeah, go ahead and grab that. Would it be? An, do, I, do you want me to roll? Would it be like a search or like a? No, it just flopped right on the ground yeah, okay. right there. They yeah. seem busy. So she just picks that up and slips it into her pocket and then sees that Roger did not subdue him and is like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, OK, I'm uh, Bobby's struggling with Ed on the on the floor. Yes. Um, Bobby is in the uh, state state uh, police gear, so he's got to have a, a, a like a taser on him. I'm, I'm assuming, right? We no? gave up all of our gave weapons. Gave up your weapons, right. unless you, you know, Roger said he held on to something. He rolled a, oh. a stealth to hide it. Um, okay, okay. Um, this guy's like wide eyed, and he is about Jesus. to just like come down Jesus on your maniac. head with like a a pound right in the face. Uh, murder. Really? Can I can I use oh, I don't have me like melee weapons is not a thing um, athletics or what, what would I roll like to, to kind of so I would basically unarmed try and combat. Thro yeah throw him off of me unarmed combat I've got 40 I've got 40 in unarmed combat yeah can I just I'm gonna roll I'm gonna roll I'm gonna throw him off this. of me you got this come on come on 40 46 damn it oh, 46. 46 oh, oh. That's a, fail. It. that's a fail. Don't and forget to click it, your box. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. Yeah, that's a big one. You don't want to forget. God. You don't want to forget that one. Oh, no, uh, and that. he whap, comes down uh, on you. Phew, dude. 28, success. He comes down on you. Bam! Oh. And I was not expecting this. Uh, oh. Thought you'd be a little bit more respectful to be honest. <laughs> uh, he was getting he on my nerves. Two points of damage as it just like busts right into your like nose and mouth, and you just see like blood comes out uh, of your nose, and it that is about how long it takes before you know maybe none of you heard it at the time, but in the split second that this happened, Nurse Samagina was just around the corner and she just started screaming down uh, the hall, and within a second that door opens up and two guys come pouring in. One of them is Richard Bryce, who you met, that big dude, and they just yeah. like come in and they grab Ed, and they're like Ed, 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 <laughs> and they're just like, and he's like, get out of me, get out of me, 
and they're like pulling him up and he's just like grabbing at you and grabbing at you and then like he sort of like kind of seems to snap out of it for a second and he starts turning around and he starts looking and he's like my book my book where's my book and they're like pulling him back and they're like we don't know Uh, we don't know Ed we don't know like um, to stealthily grab the book if he sees it no I have it oh you you have the book oh yeah Maybelline got it she okay. has it. Uh, where's my book? Where's my book? And they see uh, a, a, a crown on the ground, a crayon on the <laughs> ground, and uh, the green crayon on the ground. And they're like, "Where's his book? Where's his book?" And they Bobby's, he's Bobby's like fighting creative. against them. I don't, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. He just came at me like freaking maniac. I don't know. I don't know what the hell he's screaming about. He's screaming. We're about gonna this get and that. your book, Ed. We're gonna get your book. It's it's got to be here somewhere. I'll where's look, his book? I'll look around and uh, get out of the way. Vi- Vicky moves out of the way, but she pretends that she's like moving a chair or like looking, and she's just like, I I don't know what he's talking about. Roll persuade. Oh <laughs> God. <laughs> What's my persuade? Not that great. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, everybody okay. starts with twenty, I think that's what it is. It's a forty-four over thirty-one. Ooh. Come on, come on, just give him the book. You know you have it, just give him the book. You cannot take that book anyway like that. You can't use that. Come on, you know that. You can't use that. Oh, God damn it. Damn Vicky, it. uh, Vicky, look at like. It. Look at it. Pat, yeah, look at it. Vicky pats, pats around and then she's like, oh, damn it. And she like pulls She it. has it. She has it and she's not a detective. She's not a real detective in the Massachusetts Police Department. They're like, Ed, stop. Ed, she, we'll get the book. Relax. She, she pretends that she's like going to close whatever. It's a notebook. I don't know if it's like a spirally one, but she's like, as she's closing it, she wants to try to like look at the page and maybe. No! Don't look at my book! Pull another I mean, page. he seems crazy. <laughs> By the way, there's people in my house. So like. <laughs> this is crazy. Right? So concerned. you see <laughs> my book. <laughs> Very I mean, slowly. not to mention neighbors. I'm yelling so loud. Like people are like, that guy has a real problem. <laughs> not my book. Uh, <laughs> but she's uh, trying to slowly. It is close a it. small brown leather notebook. Okay, like a moleskin. Yeah. Um, she can she like take a peek at a page as she closes it, or like try to pull a page. He had, I mean, um, uh, Richard Bryce puts out a big kind of like meaty hand out to you. And it's like, it is the only way to calm him down. Give us the book. Yes, I am. And she, he snaps it out of your hand and gives it back to him. And Edge just like, oh, 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 thank you. Thank you. She's not a real detective. She's not a real detective. He's like, uh, and they're like, oh, Ed, Ed, just take it easy. Just step away. Take it easy. And he's like, I was going to tell them. I was going to tell them. And they're like walking him back to the to the do- uh, to the hallway. And he's, you just start to hear his voice echoing down the hallway. I was going to tell them August 28th, August 28th. Everything changed on August 28th. And they, they are whispering, whatever, saying things to him, mumbling things to him that you can't hear. And they're walking him down the hall and obviously about to sedate him. August 28th. God, that was intense. Uh, August 28th. <laughs> August 28th. What does that mean? That that wasn't on the... Was that on the plane ticket? No. No. Um, what, what's today's date? Today's date is September 2nd. All right, so this would have been like five days ago. Uh, August 28th. Six what days ago. August 28th. August 28th. If you guys... The- August 28th is the day that you guys received uh, the summons from Delta Green. Oh, okay. So it's the day they went missing. It's the day they went missing. Well, no, it would have been the day after, after right? Or the day it was discovered. Some day after. Um, fuck yeah, we got to find out. Do we, we should know at this point, like off the top of our heads, what day the disappearance happened, right? You never yeah. asked. Hey, Directly. Sam and Gina. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Well, yeah, sure. You could ask Sam and Gina. Pardon me, Nurse Semagina. What day did these disappearances take place? Well, I'm, I'm sure that's what he's talking about. I mean, I, I, I don't know what he means when he says everything changed August 28th. That's, that's just... That, just answer know. the question, Semagina. That's when the patients went missing, but nothing else changed. They just, they just disappeared August 28th. A couple people just disappeared in the thin air. 
Just another day at the office. Yeah, nothing changed that day. No, they didn't disappear into thin air. They must be somewhere. They must have gone somewhere. That's what we hope that you are here to find out. Oh, With sorry, their... sorry. I, what did you say to him? She looks to Bobby. What did you say? Uh, I mean, he got a little heated. He was giving us a runaround. I tried to just get him on track, and then he lost it. I don't know. He's he's clearly unstable. But well, I, listen. I told you. Listen. I told you to be careful. That's all that we ask. I, I don't mind you a asking patience. I think it's important if you can find something out from them that will help you find Michael and Lyra, then I want that to happen. But you have to be careful. Maybe. I apologize, nurse. I apologize. I, I got out of hand there. My, that was my fault. And I shouldn't have touched his notebook. Um, I apologize for that. Is there... Um is there a way to talk to him? I mean, we, we barely got to. Maybe if we knew some more about him, we could approach it differently. I didn't mean to cause a stir either. I think so. I, I, I think so. Ed is prone to erratic bouts of rage, and that's why he's on this floor, but he has long periods of being rather sweet uh, if, you, if you let him in. I'm sorry, if he lets you in. So is he a, I, I is he a do writer? Think, I do he, think you could talk to him. He seems to write a lot. Is that sort of, uh, is that something he likes to do or? Dr. Dallin is very adamant that we are not to uh, invade the patient's privacy in that way. And Ed is extremely private about his book. He does not show anyone uh, any attempts to look at it, um, cause him to go into a rage. What about when he sleeps? Where's the book then? Uh, it's strict orders from Dr. Dallin. Uh, no one is to look in the book when he's sleeping so as not to provoke him. You even if he, even look. if we think he wouldn't, I'm not allowed to look, no. But we're uh, officers of the law, and this is an investigation, so obviously that is correct. those rules won't apply to us. That is correct. I, if you had a warrant, I'm sure that you could take the book. We wouldn't need to take it necessarily. We can get a warrant. That's no that's no problem. But perhaps we could figure out a way while he's sleeping or sedated or during a time when he's not holding on to it. Um, maybe we could uh, look at it and return it to him as to not provoke. You should talk to Dr. Dallin about that. Of course. Um, <clears throat> Bobby <clears throat> wants to call in uh, for a warrant. Uh, use his bureaucracy to try and call in and get a warrant for this. Through Exeter or through through uh, well e either either one. All right, uh, let, mean, let's slow down. Let's yeah, slow down. Okay, okay. <laughs> you you're on a hospital floor right now, and this whole crazy shit just went down. Yeah. If you're telling me you want to do this later, okay. Or if you tell me you want to do it right now, uh, how are you doing it? Where are you doing it? And then lastly, where are you getting this warrant from? You know who who is it coming from? You know, the CIA does not issue a warrant. Right, right. I was thinking... To my to, knowledge, I could be wrong. <laughs> no, no, but. no, you're right. I was thinking that maybe he would he would get either some kind of fake warrant or something that, uh, like, is uh, like... So a through Delta Green, maybe. Believable, yeah. Either, yeah. Well, then Delta just Green or... sit on that idea for a second. Okay. Okay. And um, let's go back to uh, what you just said here, which I think is an in important... Um, note that you guys just mentioned and did, just didn't seem to, to, to put together uh, that August 28th is the day that you receive the invitation and August 28th is the day that the patients went missing according to Nurse Samagina which is weird because we got a letter in the mail and they went missing at 8.11pm yeah how did we I got a letter earlier than 811 pm PM. So she's sitting there right now. Maybe this is what Vicky's thinking yeah, in her yeah, head. Yeah. yeah. Uh, talk to me about what's happening in the scene. She just said, if you get a warrant, I'm sure you could look at the book. You said, look, just let us look at the book. And she said, talk to Dr. Dallin. What happens next in this moment right here? Uh, you're now a couple hours in the hospital. Is there, um, is there a log of, um, visitors or uh, uh, a book of patients names we we want to cross-reference some stuff uh, and I'd love to have access to a database if you uh, 
have that on hand or could lead us to that. Sure, that should be possible. Yes, follow me. And then as they're walking, you know, maybe she's leading them. She says to whoever's next to her, Bobby or uh, Neil. So not to Roger. If Roger is next to her, but I don't know if Roger walks next what's, to her. What's going on? What's going on in Vicky's head right now with Roger? <laughs> like, how are these two just in a room casually investigating uh, suspects? What's going on here? She's just mad. She's frustrated. She, Roger hasn't said a word to her. He's been completely ignoring her. And Vicky is Vicky can be cool. Like they've been cool. They've dealt with things, and they haven't seen each other in a while. But Vicky is feeling like Roger's being so unprofessional right now. You know, just just grin and bear it. Like just deal with it so he's like been ignoring eye contact she saw him hiding like across from the restaurant uh (laughs) it's amazing but she also doesn't she doesn't want to let her guard down so she's not going to make that first exactly she's waiting for him to you know build a bridge and get over it and come stand next to her so she can talk to him about the case okay so you you say to neil and bobby assuming roger's a little bit away what do you say yeah uh she says if August 28th is the day that they went missing. Our timelines are kind of fucked. Have, do you realize that? I received a letter in the mail, stamped, previously to August 28th. It arrived on August 28th, and I, I got it in the afternoon. So if, if they're telling me that August 28th at 8, 11 p.m. is when they realized the patients went missing. Something's- so we're just going to go down these stairs. And she's walking you down some stairs, down to the first floor. <coughs> when, did you, when did you get word? When did you get your letter from VG? Well, I, I, so Bobby was in out of the country, but he you can't say that. Yeah, he can't say that. I'm right? sorry, like, one more second. Um, yeah. You have blood pouring out of your nose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, also, are, yeah. You, Just are, you, are you okay? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'll be all right. Um, I agree. There's something wrong with the timeline here. There's no way I could have gotten notified at the same time that these people went missing. There's something wrong here. It's so, weird. Somebody's is somebody lying? Are they all lying? She looks at we, Neil. And now you're passing the second floor. Neil just says this was planned and we're a part of it. Vicky looks concerned and turns to to see where Roger is. Roger rolls up. Michael, Billy. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> we're really just uh, stopping the bleeding here. We're going to head down and look Your at your nose. The, uh, okay, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold oh, on. Stop, me out here. stop flinching. Uh, I can fix this. Be, be gentle. Be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> And you get that like little uh, crack that you hear on a TV show that makes you a little nauseous for a second. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Once again, I. Don't mean to step on anyone's role-playing <laughs> toes, but I am a doctor. Why did you do that? He's right there. He has his medicine doc. He just grabbed my face and started You don't need a doctor when somebody punches you in the nose. <laughs> I, I think you do. I think you need a doctor. <laughs> yeah, if if I get an opportunity, I'm going to step in. And just check him for like signs of concussion. Thank you. Make sure there's no you know, deeper damage. Well, just do it right now. I do it. You do it on this landing before the second floor, and she stops and looks up and sees that you're, like, discussing something, and she's just, like, going to wait a second. And you're, like, having him follow your finger, (laughs) and, you know, Neil is going through these processes, and you see that he doesn't have a concussion. Um, But, uh, yeah, he still needs, you know. Do you have any gauze or something? Something Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Pack it. Pack it. It's going to be perfect with my allergies, the role playing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Better. Okay. When, they, when they do that, Vicky also is standing next to Roger and she says, Mitsubishi. What? The timelines don't add up. I was explaining that before. The, the date oh. doesn't make sense and the time doesn't make sense. So I want you to be aware of what's going on. Oh, I'm aware. Great. You know, back in my day, they didn't have concussions. <laughs> just, <laughs> he just walks down the stairs. Oh, God. <laughs> Remember Al Toon? <laughs> Al Toon would get a concussion, be out there the next play. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god. Uh, god, amazing. Uh, all right. You head down, and Nurse Samagina walks you into uh, the first floor um, reception area, where you see uh, the woman, presumably named Gail, who um, uh, Doctor Dallin had mentioned. Uh, Gail, I'm not sure what Gail was doing, but she was supposed to take your weapons, you know, when you walked oh, up, yeah. you know, right. through here. But she had just like led you straight up, and she's sitting there, and up comes Nurse Samagina and says, uh, "They just wanted to see um, a list of patient names or blah blah blah." And Gail's like, "Oh," and she looks over you all, just calmly says, "Okay." And goes into a drawer and pulls out a, a list of patients, basically. So what she has down here is a list of staff, list of patients. You know, you can look through all of these things, and um, but there's no files, right? There's no like the, they're not the the medical files of the right. patients. It's just sort of like names and uh, floor designations, you know, um, for roll calls and that kind of thing. Uh, and go ahead and uh, well, you know, I don't need. I don't think you need to give me a roll. Are you going to take some time looking over this? Is this just a patient log, or is this the, a visitor log as well? It's yeah, yeah it's it's everything: patient log, visitor log, yeah. uh, uh, staff log. You like she, she down here? You can find out all this information if you'd like to. You know, to ask all these questions. Yeah, I think Vicky is happy to sit with it for a while. If you guys want to do other things too, like she's happy to sit. She's also, I mean, she's well trained in you know data analytics, like with her mail and forgery background, and she's a federal agent. So I think she is really good at recognizing <clears throat> patterns or lack thereof, like missing things. Um, so she would really like to look at the list. She also, while going through just for like off the dome things that stand out to her, she wants to also cross compare some of her old notes and names um, like Dorothy Yale, um, Lince, Darabondi, Lundine, and all these other names, Mosby, Carver, Topchick, Eric K. Carter, like Ooh. all the names that she had remembered and just see what stands out and just start you know making a separate or a carbon copy or something and, and highlighting and just sort of getting this down so she can she can sit and do that for like three hours for it that's fine yeah i was gonna say it's about three hours so yeah. um <clears throat> what do you guys want to do i think um what well, we should go talk to the other orderly right the westover orderly because we already talked to the guy who was with whitmer whitmer um, talk to the other orderly. Is that yeah. the female Was, yeah. one? Or, or, or Rike, or Rike, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, great. Uh, all right. So you guys go do that, and uh, let's stay on Vicky for a second here as you're going through this list. Go ahead and give me a search roll. Okie dokie. What's my search up to now? Oh, uh, fifty-three. Okay, let's see. Ooh, 35 under 53. Nice. 35 under 53. Oh, man. You're looking through uh, this list, and you don't see... You see Dorothy. You see uh, Timothy Bile, a name that you have from oh, yeah. the Night Floors, I believe, right? Yep, you have Timothy that name? Bile in a hospital gown, has PTSD. He's a veteran. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you see that he's a patient, at the hospital. Okay. Currently, currently a patient. Currently a patient at the hospital. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you see that there are, um, you see like when you look over staff, it's most of the people that you've already been introduced to. Uh, you know, you see Michael Devon, who is uh, security and tech. Uh, you see Dr. Dallin, obviously, Nurse Samagina, um, uh, 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 sorry, uh, Richard Bryce. Uh, you see Gail, G-A-I-L, last name Houston, H-U-S-T-O-N. Um, you see Ulrikia, who is the other woman that they probably went to talk to, and you see that she's a nurse, not an orderly. Oh, there you go. Ulrikia. Ulrikia. Um, and uh, what else, what else, what else? Um Sorry, I'm just looking. Uh, you see a patient 
named John Pailotti, P-A-I-L-O-T-T-E, Pailote. Uh, you see a woman named Clarith Garris Vance, a patient named Rudolph Valader. Uh, these are all people that are patients in the hospital on different floors. Uh, none of these names ring a bell. You do not see the name Darabondi. You don't see the name Mosby. But you start going through a, a visitor log, and something um, that is somewhat remarkable is how light it is, how few visitors there are. Um, there are some uh, visitors that are noted to be parents of patients, but they don't come often. And it's easy for you to go back, you know, kind of a ways, you know, like a, like a few months even, because there just are not that many entries. And you're 23, and your persistence, and your three hours is going to get you... Okay, and this is huge. Okay? Huge. You, you're going to get this because of something you don't know, which is your role during staying on the case during the 20 year gap it was a secret role Ooh. right was it good was it good it was a critical success oh, oh no my memory my notes <laughs> your memory your notes okay 20 uh, whatever it was at that point it's like 10 years ago as you dug back into this case right you you came across something that you never you never answered and uh you came across like questions that you never answered and one of them and i'm going to put it on our new evidence board again but this is something that uh that you had seen before uh sorry i just want to make sure i have the the right thing here uh let's see i'm going to throw it on the board hopefully it works Put it uh, on the board. Oh, yeah. Is this the play? Is this the fucking play? Oh, God. Let me see if it's the right thing. Um, it's blurry, so I can't see it, but... Yeah, well, I think it'll stop being blurry in a second. Let's see. Examination room. White walls. And yes. Yeah, we can see it. Oh, it's gosh, the, yeah. It's oh. the fucking play with all the names. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you remember you dug into this play... And yeah, it is kind of blurry. I don't know why it's coming out like that. It's okay. Um, but you guys had looked at this before. And look, this is an audio show as much as it is a video show, if not more so. So describe w what this is. From, from memory, this was, we found this in Abigail's apartment. That's right. Uh, and it was like a piece of a play that she hadn't written it, though. Somebody else, we were told, was writing it, right? Or was she writing it? Did we ever know? I'm also asking. You never knew. Uh, yeah, I don't think else. we. Yeah, oh, I don't okay. think it, yeah, we never knew. It was we just never, like random. Yeah, but it had the names. Uh, Doctor Lyra Westover was in it. Um, and somebody Richard. named Richard, which Richard. we now assume is Doctor Richard Dallin. Uh, was Roger in this one, or was Roger in a different one? Do they mention Roger? There was a different one. I remember. Just look at found. this one. The one yeah. that's right in front of you. You can't read it. All right, I so it. it's. Says, I, can, I can read it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I, it's not blurry Please read for it. me. Uh, scene an examination room, white walls and, and door, two chairs and a table. A white curtain hangs on a wall with no window. In the room are Dr. Westover and Richard. Dr. Westover, I'm not satisfied with that answer, Richard. I think there's something you're not telling me. Richard, why do you think that, Doctor? Dr. Westover, call it intuition. Or it could be my extensive training in psychotherapy. Richard, I've been very open with you, Doctor. Dr. Westover, let's move on. When did you first have the dream? Richard, the dream? Dr. Westover, I don't have time for this. Dr. Westover gets up to leave. Richard, wait! Richard adjusts his hat and coughs. Richard, um, about three months ago? Dr. Westover, very good. Richard. Dr. Westover returns to her seat and begins looking around the table. Dr. Westover, that's strange. Where's my pen? The white <laughs> door opens. Enter Barbus? Barbus, what's going on here? And that's it. 
Yeah, see, when we originally read this, we took it to mean like it sounded like Dr. Westover was the doctor and Richard was the patient. Right. But now when you read this, it obviously still reads like that, but it seems like this is the way Dr. Dallin was conducting his research on her and that's <laughs> further cemented by the fact is when she says where's my pen because they wouldn't let a patient have a sharp weapon yeah, like she weapon never like had a pen one. yeah so she's crazy and it seems like he's the, this is part of like how he's doing it but it seems like a very invasive type of uh you know psychotherapy to like yeah let it, her play act as her former self right yeah, which seems right. like it, from the from what um, Dr. Samaj or uh, Nurse Samajina was saying too is like he has this method where he lets the patients do whatever they want. Like they they can write and like talk about things even though they might not be real. And maybe you're right. He like placates it. Um, he indulges their delusions. Yeah. Well, who yeah. is who is who's Barbus? Is there Barbus? Barbus? Yeah. Have we seen that name? <laughs> oh, is that the name I see, Joe? Do I see a Barbus? On April third, twenty fifteen. In the visitor log, you see a visitor logged named Dr. Elias Barbus. <sighs> and okay. this is the combination of a critical success and a success because there is no game wow. in impossible landscapes where somebody finds this this way. But you <laughs> found it. Holy shit. That's wow. crazy. And you remember this thing from 20 years ago. And I'll say 10 <laughs> years ago for you because you pulled it all back out a decade ago. Yeah. And you were digging in. And one needle in your mind, this critical success is represented by, you know, you knew all these names, most people, whatever. And there was this one named Barbus. And you remember Roger at the time being like, it sounds, that sounds like. You know, uh, like uh, religious, like, like it's religious, yeah, like yeah. biblical, yeah, like yeah. Barnabas or uh, mm. Barabbas, or like, Barabbas, yeah, yeah. Barabbas, yeah. I was thinking of the Balfamit too, like it's like a weird name, Bar Barbus. Bar Even the way Bar it's typed, the B's are like blurry, like there's yeah. too many B's yeah. in there. It's almost as <laughs> yeah. if they didn't want me to find it. Um, okay, so now Vicky immediately is like, Eureka, um, writes it down. Can, closes it out let's say this is like the three hours and she would go to to tell them but also she's thinking remembering that play and like troy was saying the roles are reversed from what we would think would be the reality so she's wondering if barbus was a colleague of dr westover and was visiting dr westover and walked in on this weird reverse psychology thing and maybe tried to pull Westover out did you know something or other was going on so I think this is their next lead is to talk to Dr. Elias Barbus and figure out their opinion on Richard Dallin and this entire situation maybe they don't even know that Westover is missing so uh, yeah so that's Vicky's beat okay uh, so during that time uh, there was uh, you guys wanted to speak with Ulrikia uh, so let me uh, let's let's do that. Um, so we see who Bobby Ro uh, Bobby Roger and Neil. Are you guys all talking to Arikia? Well, yeah, there's something I wanted to do. It's like uh, <laughs> as we were leaving, Vicky just uh, Roger is starting to feel very claustrophobic, and it's giving him these. Uh, he has this strange feeling that he's not allowed to leave, and so he wants to. Uh, go outside and have a cigarette while I'm sure they allow smoking in here for patients it's probably the one thing they allow Joe is smiling Joe's, smi Joe's like smirking you'd like to go <laughs> he's gonna go smoke outside and oh have my a god. cigarette oh just my god. you yeah <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, part of me okay. feels like it's gonna be like Beetlejuice. Uh, shit. Yeah, yeah, the world is here. House is falling to oh, sand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the uh, what is it? The drifting, drifting classroom. Anybody ever read that manga? It's like, oh, it's so good. Drifting classroom. Mm -hmm. It's you go outside and it's like the entire school has been lifted from the earth and is like in this void. You just open the door and it's like nothingness and they're all stuck inside this school. It's so God, good, but it's so terrifying. It's like, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Okay. Uh, let's first do Bobby and Neil uh, oh. talking to Ulrikia. <laughs> oh, you um, know it's gonna be intense. bad. So, uh, <laughs> 
So we'll cut to <laughs> how much time's left in this episode? <laughs> you Cliffy and me. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Cliffy and me. We'll cut to Bobby and Neil. Um, and you go to the second floor. Ulrikia is currently on the second floor okay. uh, working with uh, a patient. And how do you approach? What do you say? Wait, second floor is where like the less crazy people are going, right? Like there were the less violent people. All right, people. let's sorry. watch. Sorry, it, let's sorry. take it easy. The okay? less violent. The less violent. Bobby's the less just violent. had his, exactly. his shit kicked in. So he's, he's like trying to remember. <laughs> like, all right. This yeah, is, this sec- is the second floor violent. is where people that are improving in their self-control, et cetera, from the third floor can okay. move to the second floor. Yes. All right. Noted. Noted. Um, so and she's currently in the women's wing, which is the West wing. Okay, we head over to her wing, and um, uh, is there like a, a reception desk there? We just we just head no. To you the have this station. blue card, this blue card that Doctor Dallin gave you. It gives you access to just go into the ward okay. uh, on the second floor from the common area, sort of from the middle building. So, and mm-hmm. I say building; they're all connected, you know, through these hallways. But from the middle building, there's a hallway that boop connects through, and you can walk into the general. Uh, west ward uh, of the second floor. Okay. And we'll we... say that Gail would have said, like, she's on the second floor right now. She's, that's her shift right now. So you can walk up there, walk in there, and you just see that she is tending to a patient. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Bobby heads over. Uh, excuse me, uh, Ulrikia? Is that uh, is that you? Yes. Hey, How, how are you? Uh, Detective Michael Bivens, uh, Massachusetts uh, State PD, he oh, th- right. shows his ID. Um, okay. w- we just got a couple questions. I'm for sorry. You. I'm sorry. One moment, please. And she turns to this woman and she says, I'm just going to speak with these gentlemen for a moment. Okay. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. She says, let's, let's speak over here. And sure. um, you get the sense that, uh, give me a human role. Do either you guys Ooh. have human? Yeah. 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 Um, human. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Bobby's got a sixty or oh, seventy-eight. Okay, seventy-eight. Right? Is that right? Sixty. Or Damn, is Bobby. It plus the ten percent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they still got an 86. What's wrong with these freaking dice? Dude? Whoa, but <laughs> these dice are bad. bad rolling. I'm Switch doing your bad dice. Rolling. I'm going left hand today. I don't know. I think that's probably a problem. <laughs> Damn it. 86. 86. She pulls you over. W- what can I do for you? Um, I, sorry, I, I don't mean to be rash, but uh, I'm just trying to wrap up here. It is getting like later in the afternoon. Yeah, sorry. Sorry to bother you. We, we just have a few questions about the night uh, Lyra Westover uh, disappeared. Shh, just, I'm sorry. Just keep your voice down. We don't yes. want to upset anybody. Sure, yes, yes, yes. Please, go ahead. Um, I, I'll try to help, but... I don't I don't know much of anything, but please go ahead, go ahead. Um, were you working that night? Were you here with her that night? I I was, yes. I I had that night I had taken her, escorted her to her, her room, yes. Anything strange shit? Did she say anything? Was she doing anything strange? She's on the second floor, so she's been improving, right? She had been uh, I'm sorry, have you spoken to Dr. Dallin? Am I meant to just yes. say anything? Dr. Dallin authorized us to speak with whoever we need to as part of our investigation. Okay, so okay, okay, I'm sorry. Feel I, free. Just, I, I feel uncomfortable sometimes revealing private uh, health information of, of patients, but yes, I. Uh, she had recently had an episode uh, about two weeks prior and she was reassigned to the third floor, which is, uh, which is, we don't even like to say the third floor around here. It really will send some patients uh, into uh, an emotional breakdown. It's a very scary thing to have to be sent back up there. And Lyra had to be sent back up there due to a violent episode. And during that day, she was still swearing to me that it wouldn't happen again. And it was, uh, it was, it was heartbreaking to be honest. And I, I, I typically try not to get that close, but it was, it was heart wrenching. She said that she wouldn't do it again. And that she knows that what she saw was, wasn't real. And she acknowledged that. What, what did were the she... specifics of the episode? What did she say that she yeah. saw? That doesn't really matter. It, it was a hallucination, but she, she said that she me. saw, Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I am a doctor, ma'am. 
I'll be the judge of what's significant and what isn't. Oh, God. Another one. (sighs) That's all I need. More doctors. Uh, She said that she saw a man that she knew, uh, but he looked strange. He looked young, younger uh, than when she knew him. And um, she said that he walked right into the hospital and um, he was Roger. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and she says she, she called him Roger and said that she knew when we asked her how she knew him, she wouldn't give us any details. She said that it, it had to do with her job is all she said. And you know, she was a doctor, a medical doctor. And so we assume that he was a doctor um, or maybe perhaps a patient she lost or something like that. We couldn't really drill down to it at the time, but she said that she, she saw him there and she asked him to help her. And we tried to make it clear to her that she was in the best place that she could be to get the help that she needs. And this this episode was a couple of weeks ago. Do you have an exact date when uh, this I'm, happened? I'm sure that we can look that up. Yes, I'm sure it was logged by Doctor Dallin. Right. I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's somewhere in that range. Two weeks ago. So this is we. This really, we can't make this connection, right? Because we don't know right. his we name is Roger. We don't know Roger. So we don't. Do, do, yeah, can I can't we remember. There here? was like there was one time at a bar where like Vicky called him Roger and like Vicky. Yeah, she. No, knows wait a minute. Now name. were all of you in that room where you saw patients and That's saw? That's what I'm trying to remember. Like, yeah, because I was being weird. Obviously, when I talked to her, <laughs> I don't like think I feel so. like everyone else was we on were the outside. Yeah, yeah we were just on the other side of the door. I feel like I, I, actually, I feel like you were all in there. I'm pretty sure you were all in there, and Neil left first like he walked out and that's when neil got separated from everybody right. if memory serves mm-hmm. when he got the invitation remember he like walked through a door and then there was yeah. like the little like clockwork child the little, yeah and what? uh and and because vicky was looking i, I thought i remember yeah. neil too like specifically saying he wanted to look at the patient record or the patient yeah. reports that yeah. were on the edges of there the was beds a or whatever clipboard at the edge of the bed i remember being there but yeah, yeah. I mean, we were in the room, but it was uh, Neil and uh, Maybelline that were looking at the actual info on the. Um, That's why I have all those patient. names in yeah. my notes because I was yeah. like writing them down. So we definitely, know, I mean, we would know that Westover, Lyra Westover, was in the night floors, but we yes. wouldn't be able to make the connection to with Roger. Roger. The two of us wouldn't. Uh, yeah, you may not know that that yeah that that's the connection, but. Um, well, but you do, you would remember that she said, you know, uh, oh, to help she, me get out of here. Did she call him Roger? When yeah. She, she did called, say that. You would know the name Roger. Right. right. Yeah. That's another thing is like, she called him Roger. So there, it yeah. stands okay. to reason that, that this, she knows. that this could be adding up and that you had some interaction with her on the night floors through time. Yeah, that's the thing. If we can, Francis, nail down this date, like maybe we'll get like a window to where this sort of tunnel occurred. Exactly, yeah. What what dates were linked. Maybe that will help us somehow down the road. So would that be in the visitor log that uh, Maybelline is looking at right now? Or no? No, that would be in her patient record. I want to talk to Dr. Dallin again. Yeah, Dr. Dallin's who we got to talk to because he has to, he has the info on that episode too, right? Mm, Yes. Okay. Yes. We got it. All right. All right thank so, you. how does this conversation end? Uh, El- Ulrika, thank you very much for your time. We're we're gonna go. It's speak Ulrikia. With- Sorry, excuse me. I mean, Ulrikia. <laughs> you know, it's, it's okay. It's a hard name. It's a yeah, hard. Yeah, it's, it's you know. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go. <laughs> Nothing drives me crazier than when a, a person with a incredibly hard name acts like you're an asshole. <laughs> yeah, because like when you're say it wrong. Ended, like, <laughs> like, sorry. Have a little self awareness. Like, yeah. come on. My tongue doesn't make that shape. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm from Massachusetts. I don't know. How to do it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna go talk to. Uh, we're gonna go talk to Doctor Allen right now. Um, and get okay. If there's anything else I can help you with, just let me know. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and she gets back to work. <laughs> now let's cut to Roger Comstone. Oh, well, 
like this. <laughs> <laughs> you smoke your cigarette and you like it. Roger's so paranoid. Roger, we cut to Roger standing outside the hospital in like the area that looks out to the parking lot, just smoking a cigarette. So I made it out there. Yeah, you made it out there. What do you mean you made it out there? You just Dude, walked out the door. He, he thinks he's going to open the door and it's just like blackness. Like another dimension. Like, yeah. Because, you know, he Roger knows. is like on another plane of paranoia. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is. Okay, so let me just yeah. say this really fast because this is important. And I keep forgetting to mention it to you guys. And again, this sounds like I'm being a jerk and telling you to play your characters better, but it's true. <laughs> you have to remember that some of you have mental disorders yeah. and oh, you have God. to look at those on your sheet and keep <laughs> yeah. that in mind. Yeah. I don't, uh, paranoia is not one of Roger's mental disorders, but <laughs> it could be, you know what I mean? Like the fact that you could be in this hospital and think, I might never escape. This might be an alternate dimension. <laughs> it's like, that's <laughs> textbook. You should be a patient here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. so, uh, but no, I appreciate it. And you're, sta he's just standing outside smoking. What, what's he thinking when he, when he walks out and he's just having that smoke? Well, I think what's going through his head is he's remembering the conversation that he had with Lyra Westover on the night floors and putting together this, you know, that there, there's a correlation between this place and the night floors and remembers that like that building was basically a portal to another world and he thinks that that same portal exists here and so what's what's kind of uh, the the crisis that he's having is that he both wants to get into this but also wants to run at the same time there's a part of him that wants that like needs to solve this because he has a, a need for, to complete things and a need to succeed. Uh, and also there's a part of him that thinks that if he does this, maybe it'll be another uh, like uh, Dr. Sam Beckett is another chance for him to leap back home. Um, but he also knows that like behind this door that he's sitting there, he's staring, he's just staring at the door and he's like, thinking about the amount of bloodshed he might have to commit. And, and as not... he's thinking that, boom, the door opens up and Richard Bryce comes walking out of the doors uh, holding a gym bag and puffing out his chest. He just looks at you, sees you outside having a smoke. She's like, everything all right? Yeah. You uh, going to work on those lads? Yeah, yeah. Just gonna go uh, hit the gym with my friend here. You uh, take a few days off? Um, no, no. I'm just uh, not interested in getting huge anymore. Oh yeah. Well, a lot of them say that. And he walks <laughs> walks by you. Also, just just. Peacocking, as you said. <laughs> and he walks uh, past you and down to uh, to his car. She's watching him the whole time. Like a hawk watching <laughs> a, a vole. Watching him like a hawk? Yeah. All right. You're watching him like a hawk. As you see, he's walking toward his car. You swear. You're smoking the cigarette. You swear he turns and talks says something like to his gym bag it's just like blah, blah, blah. he just said I was going to the gym with my friend yeah what the hell is he talking about I just about? thought he was being like kitschy like just going to my friend this gym bag stop and it. then he opens up a door <laughs> tosses the gym bag in gets in his car get that plate and get that bag Roger when he sees excuse that. me would you let the man <laughs> kill him have a serious shoot you! Roger's going to put like five bullets in him while he's trying to drive out. He's just shattering the windows of the car. It's funny. So you said, I'm just going with my friend. It was one of those things like you're having a conversation and like you didn't hear it until the person walks away and he's like, did he say go with my friend? Because that actually, that kind of happened during the role play. And so Roger's putting that together and then he sees him talk to the bag and I imagine he just like, drops the cigarette and starts walking with purpose towards the guy and if the guy is pulling out Roger will just stand in front of the car not unlike what he did on the Upper West, Man, <laughs> Upper West Side of Manhattan uh, when the handler caught him and Vicky on the way to Carmine's uh, like Graham 
He's that's <laughs> <Life crab. laughs> I, I may have not described the scene exactly correctly. He's already gone. He oh, got in his car and he drove before you could uh, walk to him. He, when I saw him talk to the bag. I was going to. Yeah, I mean, it was right before he got in his car. So he like said something, but he walked a good distance before he ever said something. And okay. then you swear you saw it. It was from a long distance, but he hopped in his car, started it so up. So I just and, start walking and I have no chance of catching him and he doesn't run. He's just walking fast. Just watch him go. And he goes out the gates of the place. Yeah, he stops at the guard thing. Guard gives him a little wave. You see a little hand come out of the guard post. Gate opens up, and he drives out. He turns and looks at the building again. How many floors is it? Three. Three stories. fuck is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's cut back in now. Vicky and uh, are reconnecting with uh, Bobby and Neil speaking with Dr. Dallin, perhaps? Yeah, maybe we go back to his office. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's the end of the day. It's getting to the end of the afternoon at this point, and oh, it's right. the end of the day, and that's kind of why um, uh, Richard Bryce was leaving, go to work on his lats, and when <laughs> you uh, go into, uh, when you come to Dr. Dallin's office, he's just like, uh, I was wondering when you were going to come back in. Uh, I were ready to, are you ready to get out of here? Did you figure find anything uh, interesting? Uh I think we got a good um, jumping off point, but uh, I assume we'll be coming back tomorrow. Uh, What day is it? What day is it? I I don't remember what day of the week it is, but it's September 2nd. Uh, We'll we'll look it up. Uh, I think it's it's Saturday. I think it's Saturday, but we'll we'll look it up. Labor Day weekend. One one question, doctor. (laughs) It it may be. It may very well be Labor Day weekend. (laughs) Uh, One question, doctor. Uh, Ulrike. Yes. R- Urikia had mentioned that uh, Dr. Westover had some kind of episode a couple of weeks back. Can you can you tell us more about that? What what happened to her? Oh yes, yes, of course. Um, look, I, I I can't stay long, uh, but we can talk more about it tomorrow. But I can tell you that she had some sort of hallucination. Uh, she believed she saw someone in the hospital. She spoke to this person. They spoke to her, etc. You know, had a, a, a phantom conversation. And when one of the orderlies asked her who she was speaking to, she said the name Roger, I believe. And uh, they tried to explain to her that that was not happening, which is something that we're more inclined to do. Honestly, I, I don't want to get too deep into it, but we're more inclined to do that on the second floor to try to like make them differentiate between their reality and what is the objective reality. Uh, on the third floor, we might go with it a little bit longer just to keep them safe and keep them uh, calm. And when she was told that this wasn't real, she had an extreme reaction. Extreme how? Uh, I, I, she she attacked the orderly. Uh, I She clawed a bit, and I believe there was... Um, a bite. I believe she bit uh, the orderly, which is what sent her back up to the third floor a couple weeks before the disappearance. She had no violent episodes after that, but that one incident had... Um, Textbook claw, claw, bite attack. Yes. It was a full full attack action. Do you know did the she, date. Did she, rake? Remember... Did, did she rake with her claw, claw, <laughs> yeah. bite? Or... Did she, she rend at the she end of her claw, claw, bite She didn't hit with both claws, unfortunately. Oh. So she was uh. unable... For, I'm sorry, fortunately. Fortunately, she was, <laughs> fortunately, she was unable to rend. <laughs> no, I understand. You're on the side of the patients. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> what was the... Uh, all right, sorry. It is a, it is a Wednesday. It, it, it currently is a Wednesday. Sorry. And sorry, you were asking a question. It's good. What was the? Do you remember the exact date of the incident? Do you have that on a record of that? Uh, I should. Yes. Uh, and he goes into his files, and um, actually, you know what? He goes into his computer because the files are in the computer. <laughs> and now and so we he, computer. He, okay. <laughs> he sits down. He starts clicking. Like, you know, I have to remind myself that we're not in 1995. Right. And like he's not like, pulling up a huge metal drawer. Clack, <laughs> You know. So uh, he brings up uh, Dr. Lyra Westover's information on the computer and uh, let's see he will uh, 
The date is August 13th, 2015. Sorry, I just needed a second. August 13th, 2015 is when this incident occurs. Ah, okay. So it was not the 28th. Well, uh, well, 28th is when she went missing. That's when she vanished. Oh, when the incident occurred for her. Okay, copy, copy. Yeah, the incident with Roger. Quote, yeah. unquote, Roger. Um, um, w- I can give you your weapons back if you're ready to leave the hospital for the day and shall we reconvene tomorrow? Absolutely. W- one yeah. more thing. Um, we wanted to take a look at the notebook that Ed Wist uh, keeps his notes in. I understand that it's part of your um, methodology that you allow the patients to um, write what they want, do what they would like, but I also understand from Nurse uh, Samagina that Ed Wist is very protective of his personal information and notebook, and I completely understand. We are ready to get a warrant if we need to but I also don't want to cause a stir I understand it could stress him out uh, create an incident if there is a way to get the notebook while he is asleep or sedated or at a time when he's not using it just to briefly (laughs) copy down notes I understand what you're saying detective he is never not using it but I I understand what you're getting at roll a persuade Mm, on, why? Who has better persuade? I but don't. I have to get like God 20. damn it. Can you aid me? Can you also roll? <laughs> yeah, can we do like a, a assist well, roll? I, I was, I wanted to try a different tack. Okay, try a different tack because oh, yeah. I fucked that one up. I got uh, a 87 over 30. I got to check that box, man. I keep uh, yeah. screwing up he persuade. He says you can, you can go ahead and get a warrant for that for sure. And we'll, put it we'll, in my notes. We'll open it up if it becomes legal concerns, but we have very strict rules about patient privacy here in the hospital. It's doctor, uh, may yes. I call you doctor? Absolutely. <laughs> Two questions. Uh, first, does the name Elias, Dr. Elias Barbas ring a bell to you? Doesn't ring a bell to me, no. Interesting. I, I pull out my little notebook, I make a note. I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a physician myself, and uh, I also have a PhD in psychotherapy. You're a uh, physician and a detective? I am. Specialist. Very impressive. Well, parents are very proud, as you might expect. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he laughs. Listen, we uh, all live and die by the approval of our parents, do we not? <laughs> of course. You would That's know that That's a funny thing for Neil, too. Yeah. He says, uh, listen, I think I was able to get the beginnings of a kind of rapport with Ed. I wonder if I might be allowed one last chance to just talk to him to see if I can get a little bit more information about him. Ed Wist, he, he's been sedated um, after his episode, but I don't see any reason why you can't speak with him tomorrow if you felt like there was a connection here. He'll calm down, and and he should be available to speak with you tomorrow. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you all, and I appreciate your uh, patience, and I'm very sorry, uh, Detective uh, Givens. McGivens? Bivens. I'm very sorry, Detective Bivens, uh, about the the incident. Um, But you should know this this is a a reality of working on the third floor, so... You, uh, you know, yep. I, thank you. But Dr. yes, um, pres- I, I would uh, recommend not having Detective Bivens there the next time you're uh, questioning Mr. Wist. Uh, perhaps keeping him apart would make it easier on you. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. And he opens up this safe and he pulls out your weapons. Where's the other one? Where is uh, Detective Royale? I'll never forget that name. <laughs> uh, Mitsubishi's That's how out, you know uh, it's real. I mean, no one would ever invent such an outlandish stupid name. Stupid yeah. name. It would only perhaps I could uh, give this undue interest. Perhaps I could give this to you. And he hands uh, the gun that Roger gave him to Vicky. Uh, of course, I'll to get this give back. to him for me. I'll get that back um, to him. And uh, I'll escort you uh, to the door here uh, because, like I said, you shouldn't have the weapons on the third floor at all, Um, shall we? And he'll walk you out, and you see he closes his office, he locks his office door, and 
walks you down the main stairway, the same stairway you went down with Esther Samagina to get to the main, uh, the front desk. And uh, at the front desk, he bids you adieu. And um, and where's Roger? Roger's, uh, he's still outside and he's uh, just chain smoking, waiting for everybody to come on. I imagine he thinks that, like, or maybe he's like just starting to come back in and they run into each other. Okay. So kind of like, oh, hey. I was just coming back inside. The uh, the detectives were just leaving, Gail. Uh, remember, when they come in tomorrow, they're expected here probably in the morning. Make sure that uh, they don't have any... We, we keep their weapons safe in a, the locker here. And he's given her like that like passive-aggressive boss tone. Uh, and she's like, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. And uh, And you're giving your weapons back and then sort of, you know, here's your hat. Don't keep standing around here with weapons in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We say thank you to the doctor. We head outside. Okay. Uh, all right. So tell me the conversation that happens outside the hospital. Oh, Do you get man. in? There's two cars, right? There's two cars. And uh, so what happens here? Right, we start walking towards the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Let's walk to our cars. So away yeah, from the yeah. building. First, yeah, Vicky has walk. Roger's gun. Yeah. Yeah. Do, does one of you have my gun? I have it. Can we I need to. Can I have my gun back? Of course. Why Thank am I still you. talking about my Boston accent? You can have your gun back. <laughs> Thank you. I still had several on me. Why? And I like that one. Um. I have some. Um, the building. What? Something ain't right here. Agreed. Did you feel it? Definitely. Yeah. I can't uh, put my finger on it, but something isn't right, and my fears were uh, amplified when that uh, orderly with the poor shoulder muscles came out. <laughs> he uh, he said something that at the time I didn't think too much about it, but then I saw him walk away. Basically, he said he was going to the gym with his friend, motioned to his side. I said, oh, I wasn't really listening to him. I was staring at his poorly developed back. (laughs) And then he walked away, and it seemed like he was having a conversation with his with his gym bag. That is strange. Like, <laughs> dude, Bobby, you're weird. so good at nailing the straight man. <laughs> that that, is, stra- is, that strange. is strange. Strange. <laughs> did you follow him? I did. I, I I hustled after him, but he was too far away. By the time I noticed, he was gone. Did you get his plate? No. We'll see him tomorrow. Yeah. Assuming we can even get out of here, there's a part of me. You're going to think I'm crazy. There's a part of me that thinks we can't leave. No, I had the same thought. I held my breath when you left the building, actually. I was worried. Why? Well, I, I wasn't worried. I just thought something... I was curious um, to see what would happen. <clears throat> Bobby breaks that line of thought. Let's let's stay on, uh, on mission here. I- uh, what else did we find out today? I have a potential lead, actually. Um, Do you remember the play? The strangely formatted play that we found in Abigail's apartment that I still do in Boston. Don't know what's happening. Uh, (laughs) These accents are hard. Uh, Um, (laughs) They blend together all the time. New York, the New York-Boston switchover is difficult for me. But um, the the, um, play it had... One of the toughest in show business. (laughs) (laughs) The uh, play that had Dr. Lyra Westover in it. It it doesn't matter. We've already made that connection. She's a patient. We know now. But there was another name and I, I, I had completely forgotten it. I, I, I couldn't put my finger on it until I was going through the visitor locks for the building. Dr. Elias Barbis knew Dr. Westover. 
this might be our, our best bet to, to figure out well, I don't know. I, more about Westover, more about Dr. Dallin, because I do not trust him. Did you confront Dallin about this Barbus? Absolutely not. Why give him information? I think Maybelline, we should... I apologize. I was speaking under the assumption that I was also clued in to this knowledge, which apparently I wasn't. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I was That's all right. Just imagine that none of that ever happened. None of that ever happened. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about? Did I miss something? You because... didn't say... Yeah, Skid had said to Dr. Dallin that asked him about Barbus. He asked him if wait, he knew about Barbus. Wait, did you? I compl- he didn't. You, I comp- you asked him about talking to Ed. I'm sorry. Yeah, talking to Ed. Yeah. I thought he asked him about Barbus. Yeah, yeah. And no, Dallin did. was like, no. I, yeah, he's I, like, I never heard of him. Vicky wait. asked that. You guys are going crazy. No, no, no. <laughs> wait, I didn't I mention- specifically remember Skid <laughs> asking. <laughs> and Vicky asked and Skid said, I have another- uh, No, I asked about Ed. <laughs> I asked about Ed. I do not remember Skid mentioning- Barbus. Did you mention Barbus? Yeah, All I right, so totally let's, remember let's that. Right and Dallin was let's, like, I don't know who you're talking about. Let's retcon because Joe didn't realize it either. I think we well, got... It's too yeah. late. The only way we can retcon is that you've shared that information with Neil. No, no, no. We you retcon that cause, I... Because Joe's already responded and, and, and Dallin saying, I don't know who the fuck Barbus is. <laughs> yeah. So we can't retcon that as well. We already know that information. So you all had right, to fine. have shared this Is that still Neil. the answer, Joe? Did you know or did, was, did we all get confused? Because I was confused. Yeah, that's still the answer. I just okay. thought you asked it. Um, oh. No. Yeah. I, did I black oh, out? Oh, right, right, right. I'm sorry. You asked about seeing his book, seeing Ed's book, yeah, getting yeah, a yeah. warrant, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right. And you said, I'm a physician as well. Uh, how about Dr. Barbus? <laughs> exactly. So, yes, you yeah. would have had to share with him that's that fine. you found info about Dr. Barbus. So, yes. we retcon. Yeah, we told him. I think he's bullshitting. I don't trust Dr. Dallin mm-hmm. as far as I could throw him. Right. right. So, if Dallin is outright lying to th- about that. Then why? It's, then, Why then, would he then do that? nothing he says can be uh, right. taken as fact. I think we need to find this Dr. Elias Barbas and talk to them, get what information we can, but we absolutely have to come back here tomorrow. And these nurses, agreed. they all seem cowed by his presence. It's like he has them in some sort of a trance. The Did you notice that? The receptionist hmm. was the weirdest to me. Did you guys see? Her eyes were like glazed over. They were like a doll's eyes. It was super freaky. They're all like that. Three hours, she was just like staring at me. I don't think she blinked. They're all in this... They're they're like the Stepford Wives. Hmm. I've seen that movie. (laughs) Well, uh, Murnau and and, and I spoke with Ulrikia, who mentioned that Westerver had an episode in which she brought up a name she hallucinated that she saw a person named Roger. Roger Stiffens. Vicky also just kind of stiffens. Does that mean I anything? I mean, Roger's heard this now a few times, so he's not, this and is so is Vicky. but he's trying to like. And I feel like Bobby knows the name Roger. We've heard the name Roger before in that last thing. And well, it's, in the, last... it's also in the other play. It's right. mentioned. Right. I, it's think it's, I think it's hard. To, it's hard for me. It's a bit. Of, uh, maybe I'll speak for the audience here. I think it's a bit <laughs> of a stretch for me yeah. to believe that you don't know his yeah. name is Roger. Know his yeah. Roger. I fucked yeah. it up yeah. too. So I mean, if you don't talk like... to each other about it yeah. and you're not open about it, I think yeah. you're like, come on, man. Yeah. We know oh, your name's Roger. <laughs> that's what I'm feeling like Bobby that's had all, to bring That's it up. maybe all you know. You probably don't know his last name's Cumstone. Right. You probably don't know his middle name is Moore. M O R E. We just throw up our hands and give up if we knew his last name was Cumstone. Insane. Come on made up name That's and a in this name. timeline Roger did a mission with Lyra Westover in uh, Keene right that happened yeah mm-hmm. that was in okay. 2009 2009 uh, so Roger uh, by that maybe we're getting up to the car and Roger just turns and says I uh, I spoke to Lyra Westover on the night floors. She recognized me. And though I didn't recognize her, a part of me did, if that makes any sense. I thought about her for a long time. I thought about the night floors for a long time. Then 
Delta Green came calling again, and I was sent on a mission. Now I don't want to talk about what went down on that mission, but I will say that I was paired with an agent, Lyra Westover. The same woman that I met on the night floors, and the same woman who disappeared from this building. Jesus. We have been chosen. Yeah. That much seems clear. Neil, We were all told about this before this even happened. Yeah, you said something interesting, Neil. What was it before? When I said the timelines don't match up? I, I don't even remember. I don't remember either. I was trying to... Some, some <laughs> fucked up. It was something cool, though. It was really this badass. Was all, this was all planned. It planned. And we are all part of it. Hmm. We've been a part of it. Yeah, that's what he said. He just calmly said, this is all planned. And so we're all a part of it. Badass. Oh, jeez. Good he's, line, Neil. Good Neil's line. such a cool agent. He's like the coolest agent. He's so <laughs> cool, calm, and collected. Yeah. All right, so now you're at your cars. Um, Thoroughly y- freaked you out. You are... I'm shaking. Uh, you want to look into this uh, Dr. Elias Barbas, and you want to come back here tomorrow. There's no reason you can't look into Dr. Elias Barbas tonight. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's 2015 now, not right. 95, and you have the internet. Um, and it seems like a unique enough name. So, um, how do you guys want to go about this? Apple Store. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the party together. I know. Yes. <laughs> Flash um, to <laughs> Beacon Street. Apple you, Store. <laughs> you know you can't make calls on the phones in the Apple Store. You can use the internet. The phones don't have SIM cards or service. What are oh, you going to yeah, do? They're talking about looking stuff up on the internet. Oh, I thought can he wants have... to call him, try to call him from the Apple store. No, that should um, be. I know a place. Cut to. <laughs> Bobby's, Bobby's, got, place. <laughs> Bobby's got a 42 in computer science. Is that enough to have like a, 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 a CIA issue laptop or with him with internet access? It's 2015. We 2015. all probably have I feel flat. like we should. I mean, yeah. the internet was fairly rudimentary back then at that it point, was. but I uh-huh. still think we would be able to use it to find yeah. someone like this. Yeah. Hold on, I gotta plug it in. (laughs) (laughs) I need a phone line. Somebody give me a phone jack. Oh shit, I plugged it into the fax. Hold on. (laughs) Hook it up to a windmill. (laughs) (laughs) What's the plan? Um, Apple Store. Apple Store. Apple Store. No, <laughs> Apple Store. I mean, Why are we going? I, Fine. I Vicky like... thinks we're going to like a, a restaurant or something to like discuss, and we show up to the Apple we Store. We show up to the Apple Store. All right. <laughs> all we're all in the same car. We're all, all the same of car. These are internet computers. Do we okay. want to leave one of the cars there just to see? That's weird. For shits and. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, so we'd have to come back and pick it up. And then, I mean, because wh- where did Roger get his car? He he got his own car, right? Yeah. Like, he's just driving his own car. Don't ask too many questions. <laughs> 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 we're, gonna, we're all going to drive to the Apple Store. It's got a Yeah, no. Uh, we, we just need to go to the internet. Don't we have a fucking phone that can go on the internet? Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> can we just be like... Who's dead? But no, Roger doesn't. But maybe one of you do. Yeah, I definitely. Bobby's got uh, either either a laptop or something enabled with internet access. Like <laughs> Roger internet. has a Samsung Razor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, right, a, well, can we not say, do it in the parking lot? Maybe. Yes. Like, can, we'll we just, can you give me a scene? Like we'll, a we'll, good scene. We'll drive. Uh, so we all get in the car. Roger, leave your car here. I'll no. I'll follow you. <laughs> Just, yeah, follow, right. I'll follow you. Follow Three of us get into one of the cars. Leave your car here. <laughs> leave your car. No, no. <laughs> Let me hook up your Fine. car to my toe. <laughs> I'll drag yours along. We're my going, God. we're going to meet up at, let's see, meet up at Murnau's hotel because they have the internet. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. We're yeah. doing it. We're driving. Where are you staying? <laughs> uh... Staying at the Ritz Carlton, of Ritz- course. Clearly, <laughs> so we drive to the Ritz Carlton downtown. Uh, uh, all right, you pull up to the gate, and uh, same guard from this morning 
pokes his head out, sees your two cars coming up, recognizes you and your badges and stuff like that. Just doop, 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 hits something on his thing. He says, have a nice day. Yeah, and, have a good one. Uh, See you tomorrow. Uh, and then the, the gate parts open, and you guys pull out and head to... Uh, the Ritz Carlton. Yeah, it's Carlton. Got out. Yeah, right, so we just let Roger out. Did they let Roger leave? <laughs> no. Yes, they let Roger drive out. <laughs> wow! Oh, wow! Imagine that. They're keeping Roger. They're keeping him. <laughs> he says, "You three can go. <laughs> you, you, this one, this one stays. Watch out for the sand." <laughs> uh, so you guys pull out. Speaking of which, uh, you just bringing that up reminded me of like. I, I was pretty legitimately scared of Beetlejuice when I first saw it. Because I was oh, like was, a little kid. It was a nightmare, oh. yeah. And was I was like, well. this is so scary. And I kind of liked it and didn't at the same time. And then like within a couple years, I just like really liked it. You know, but like I remember early on being like really, really scared. <laughs> totally. It's such a freaky movie. It yeah, is very weird. I've never seen anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like all the, the horrible faces. It was like for a kid, yeah. that's a lot. I mean, yeah. as an adult, you think, oh, that's artistic. Weird. But like, yeah. <laughs> As yeah. a kid, it's frightening. So, um, you we, we see the cars pull up to the Ritz Carlton, and we see you guys head in. And are you going to go just into a restaurant in the Ritz Carlton, or are you going into like Neil's room and like going on uh, lockdown in there? Uh, I've yeah. got a suite, so we'll just go yeah. to the suite. We're going to the suite. Neil's Neil's balling. We're going. To All right. Room. So we cut to the suite, and uh, you start putting information for Doctor Elias Barbus. It is a. Um, it's a unique enough name that I think you get a hit uh, pretty quickly and you see a, a hit that comes up that says that Dr. Elias Barbas in uh, Massachusetts. Okay. And you're like, well, you know, this, this, this has to be the doctor. And as you click on the link, you see you are immediately taken to the Massachusetts state police website oh, oh no and there's a staff listing and as you scroll down the page slowly up scrolls the name Dr. Elias Barbas along with a photograph if you go on the uh, evidence board I'll drop it right over the Abigail Wright um, right over the Abigail Wright note you see a picture of Dr. Elias Barbas of the Massachusetts State Police. It's the same oh. face as oh. Agent Exeter. What? What? Oh. 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 We'll see you next time, baby! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. oh, my God. Oh. Holy crap, I'm like looking at it like, wait, I just see Exeter. What? Is this an error? <laughs> wait, <laughs> like, what is this? Is my, is my computer glitching? What's we happening? found his alias. Oh, oh my God. God. But he's involved! He's he fucking involved. involved! He's in it! Excellent! Oh, involved. My gosh. Oh, no one is safe. No oh. one is safe. <laughs> 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 the whole program is involved! Nice. Thank you so much for hanging out, for watching with us. What a great time. We'll, uh, we'll see you in a week. We'll see you next yes. time. Bye. Sweet wow. nightmares, everybody! <laughs> Have good nightmares, everybody! I will never sleep again. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.